I'm Nick Rodriguez with the Squinting Service Team, and today we are going to take apart the Copilot controller. Now, the things that we're going to be doing today with the controller are going to be applicable to any Copilot system that you guys may have, whether it's 500, 256, 128. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the parts, what's replaceable in the field, and show you how to do that. First thing we need to do to take this apart is to remove the bezel. That we're going to need a uh, number two Phillips screwdriver and we're going to go ahead and remove the screws on either side. The bezel should just lift up and release. You'll notice that there's a little gasket here that helps protect the inside of the controller from any sort of um, outside dust or fluid. So now that we have the bezel removed we can go ahead and take a look at what we've got inside. There are three main components with a couple of other components underneath there that provide power. The first one we'll see is the main board, the display, and the printhead interface card. So to gain access to the rest of this we're going to go ahead and remove the printhead interface card first. To do that we'll need to remove the two screws here and here. Well, that'll allow us to pull this whole plate off. With our screws out, we can go ahead and remove our cables. Each flat cable is going to go to a specific printhead that you'll see on the back, printhead 1 and printhead 2. So we can go ahead and remove them from the main board just by pulling upwards. Look at that. The last thing here will be our power supply. Just pull that up. The whole board plate should come out like such. This is going to be the only board that will be different in your controller and dependent on the head type that you're using. Um, if you need um, help identifying the part, you can go ahead and reference the back of the user's guide. There's going to be an expanded diagram that shows the parts inside of the controller and it should have the appropriate printhead interface board for your head. If you still need problem or need help, you can go ahead and contact the service department. Now if I wanted to remove this from this plate to replace this board, what I'd have to do is remove these standoffs here, which we will do with a 5mm or 3 16 nut driver. those standoffs out of the way, I should be able just to just pull the plate out of the way, and there's my board. Well, you'll notice that the flat data cables here have a key here that points away from the board. That's important for when you're reinstalling them. Same as here. Try to pay attention to which cable goes where. To uh, release these power supply cables, you press in on the tab, while simultaneously pulling back on that wire. And that will release that. To reinstall the, the uh, power cable, you just go ahead and insert the wire back into its socket. And with the screwdriver, gently push in and push the cable towards it. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the display so that we can replace it with a new one. One of the things you'll see here, and one of the more uh, fragile spots of the controller is gonna be right here, this little connector. In order to remove the ribbon cable, we have to unlock it. You'll see this black tab here. But with the flathead, you can go ahead and lift up. The upward position is loose. When it's down, that is locked. So in order to remove, before you start yanking on the cable, we go ahead and lift up. And then we should be able to slide that cable backwards, just like that. Well, one of the things you may notice with how it was sitting in is there is that the leads don't go all the way into the socket. That's normal. You go until it, uh, until it stops and then you lock it in place. But we'll cover that when we do the installation. Another thing that's holding in the or holding in the, the display is going to be some tabs that we have underneath it. Now to loosen those tabs up, we go ahead and use a flathead and kind of just slide it underneath and you will feel a slight pop just like that. Now you want to take care not to put too much torque or ramp ramp upwards like that as you may damage the display. So once we're loose, we can go ahead and lift up. And there you'll see our sticky tabs. And we're holding it in place here, here, and here. And our data cable. And so that's our display. And what we would do is clean these areas off and get it ready for a new display. So now that we have the display and the print head interface card removed, we have access to our main board. Now the main board in the Copilot controller is gonna be, um, is gonna be serial number specific, meaning that if you are going to replace a board in one of your controllers, we're gonna need to know what serial number that controller is. That way the proper programming for the board can be utilized and it helps determine what the head type is as well. So, before we get to removing this, we need to remove the power supply connector in the back, which should just pull upwards, like so. Now that that's loose, we can go ahead and loosen up the four screws that are holding the board in place. With that, the board should just slide up and out. And there's our main board. A couple of things to point out is, first, the dip switch settings. This is normal and should not ever be adjusted. The other thing here is the timekeeper battery that we use. Uh, this helps maintain the system's uh, time and date to be accurate. If you ever see that your time goes to some bogus date and always reverse the same bogus date every time you power down the controller, this battery may need to be replaced. Other than that, all we need is a serial number and uh, we program it for you and that's it. So the last few things to point out at the bottom of the controller is the main power supply, the AC switch, and the connector on the bottom here. These are uh, items that are rarely replaced but do from time to time need to be replaced. Uh, the power supply itself is held down by four screws and uh, you would have to unplug this connector for the replacement which just basically pushes in and pulls up. So now we'll go ahead and reassemble the controller. 
First thing we'll do here is install the main board and slide that in place. And you're looking for it to line up with the front as well, with the sockets that we have there. Once you get that lined up and in place, we'll go ahead and tighten up all the screws here. Once the board's in place, we'll want to make sure that we reconnect our power cable. That should slide straight down and you'll feel that snap. So when you get a replacement uh, display for your Copilot controller, you will get a set of four tabs just like this. These are just uh, double-sided sticky tabs. Uh, what you want to do is install the tabs first onto the controller before we put in the display. So what I like to do is peel the cord, the backing off, lay it flat on the edge of the where the previous one was, press down. And I like to do all of them in one go. Once you have them in place, you can go ahead and remove that other side of the film that's there. All right, so once you have those all down, I like to carefully line up the screen with these edges here and slowly put them down into place. Once I have them lined up here, I'll give a firm little press into the corners to make sure that the screen is locked in place. Once that's down, we're going to go ahead and deal with our data cable. So what we want to do first is make sure our lock tab on the socket is up like that, in the upward position. Next thing we'll do is guide the data cable into the socket. Now, sometimes you can do it with your fingers. Other times, you have to use a tool. What I like to use is a needle nose pliers to help guide it all the way in. There's a tab on each side of the data cable. It'll help you guide. And you press until it stops. You'll notice that some of the leads stick out and that's normal. You won't be able to get it all the way in. If you keep pressing, you'll damage either the connector or the uh, cable itself. And once that's in place, we'll go ahead and press down on our lock tab. And make sure we're good. Quick test. Our display has been properly installed. One of the final steps here will be to reinstall our interface board onto our plate here. And what that'll involve is just lining up the connections here, just like that. And now we'll go ahead and reinstall our standoffs in place. Once our board is mounted, we'll need to go ahead and reinstall it onto our controller. First thing we'll do is line up our plate, like so, and we're going to go ahead and mount it down with these screws here.
same with the other side. Now this is the important part about mounting this interface board back into place. You'll notice two ribbon cables, each lining up with the, pr uh, the proper print head. You'll also see in here the ports. Okay? It should just line up so the one on the right goes to the one on the right and the one on the left goes to the one on the left. So we'll take this one and they are keyed. If we look at the connections there, there's a key to it. So we'll take that one and install it on that side. Right. We'll do the same with the other side with the only other available option right there. And for our power supply connection here, we can use either one of these connectors. I always like to go with the closest one. Push that down, make sure it's seated. All right, so everything should be firmly secured and in place. Now we're ready to go ahead and reinstall our bezel. To reinstall our bezel, we just line it up. And gently depress down. The thing that we want to look for is that we are lined up with the screw holes here. Some of that will come into place as you fasten the other side together, but as long as you have a place to start. So we'll go ahead and start lining up the tops. screw here and that completes our disassembly and reassembly of our co-pilot controller it should be ready to commission and put back online for service all squid ink controllers are FCC, TUV, and CE certified. Any repairs made on the controllers outside of the facility here will invalidate those certifications. So remember, once you've completed those in-field repairs, to take your tag and cover up the FCC, TUV, and CE markings on the serial number tag. If your business requires that these certif certifications stay, then you always have the option of sending in the controller to the Squid Ink department and we can go ahead and make the repairs for you because we have the proper equipment to maintain the standards for the FCC certifications. I hope you found that video helpful. For more videos like this, feel free to find us on YouTube or elsewhere on the web. Uh, thanks for watching.